Well, I'm ready for my screen test now, Mr. DeMille. Hi, I'm here on behalf of uh, Yukioto Publishing, my publisher, to answer a few questions that they put uh, before me that they would like me to um, elucidate uh, for the audience as a talking head here on YouTube. And I'm delighted to be doing this. So without further ado, let's turn to the questions. I guess um, my name is Gary S. Cadet. I've been a writer for most of my adult life, which has been considerable. Um, I have been a proofreader, an editor, um, a production manager, a journalist, print journalist, internet journalist, 25 years. I've been a critic <laughs> and a reviewer. I've written novels, screenplays, stage plays, anything you can imagine, I've written it. Uh, and I've done a fair amount and still do a fair amount of ghost writing. Um, I've never found so much lucrative um, power in an anonymity, but there you are. So celebrities don't get all the money. Um, I realized I wanted to be a writer when I got out of college and I realized I didn't want to work all that hard. And uh, it seemed to me a better occupation than taxi driver. Uh, so I turned to it, and it turned out to be hard work. It also turned out that I really didn't mind doing it. And so that's how the relationship was forged. I guess you could say I write crime. I write a fair amount of literary fiction, but like William Faulkner and Thomas Hardy and Dickens, there's a lot of crime in what I write, just as there was in some of their more literary novels. Um, any anything from uh, David Copperfield to As I Lay Dying or uh, Sound and the Fury or uh, Return of the Native. Anyway, um, that's me. And uh, I published a novel uh, a few years back with uh, Tor Forge, um, Macmillan, I think then they were Holtz Brink and partnered with St. Martin's Press, corporate publishing, big five. Um, I got a lot of positive reviews, editorial reviews. I got a lot of praise. I got, um, the book was optioned uh, and I got option money and I was hired to write screenplays out of that. Kind of an odd thing I never thought I'd fall into. And I was also hired by Playboy and they published uh, my fiction. It took up 12 pages of the magazine. So that's always nice. And uh, now I'm publishing books again. And uh, my first and newest book is being brought um, to you through Yukioto Publishing, who I think is a, a tremendous operation, uh, extremely professional. I've had no criticism about anything they've done. Um, and I would publish with them in a New York minute. Okay, so where do I get my information or ideas? The news, all the news I can get. Fiction, novels, um, philosophical treatises like uh, by such figures as Jacques Ellul or um, Martin Heidegger. Uh, I get a lot of <laughs> a lot of different stripes of knowledge and written material that I digest and that somehow is poured into, um, into my books. I, I think I've read the height of a small building, maybe not, maybe a not so small building. Um, I read an average of three or four books at a time. I also write three or four novels, um, pardon me, I shouldn't say that, two or three novels at a time, usually three when I'm hit in my stride. Um, what do I think makes a good story? William Faulkner said that uh, the only story worth telling was the human heart in conflict with itself. I don't really dispute that, but I don't really think it depends on the story, to be honest. Uh, anyone who's read Marcel Proust and uh, Remembrance of Things Past uh, realizes that there's no plot, there's no gimmick, there's no world building, but he does create a spectacular array of phenomena um, writing in his room in his sick bed after having bitten into a madeleine, a cookie that caused a mnemonic response. Um, anyone who's read James Joyce's Ulysses knows that plot is not essential, that story is not essential. And uh, frankly, I don't think publishing, uh, contemporary publishing really thinks the story is all that important either because uh, they delve into uh, myths, fairy tales, old wives tales, anything that's public uh, domain. 
they they do Tarzan if the if there was no estate copywriting on it. And it's just a matter of business, uh, and uh, it doesn't really matter what the story is. You want to catch the reader, you do it through your writing, and if uh, the reader can read your writing and be driven by it, um, you don't really have to worry about your beginning, middle, or end. And no, the show don't tell idea is best used for screenplays. I know I write them. You don't want to write a book like a screenplay. There are things that novels can do that screenplays can't, and they enter directly into the brain and maybe engage your cogitation. Um, how do I plan out my time? I don't. I write when I feel like it, which, by the way, is the lion's share of the time. Um, if I'm in a terrible mood or if I'm not feeling well or if I'm overtired, maybe not. But otherwise, I'm doing it. What do I think is the most challenging phase in the writing process? Well, um, publishing. <laughs> Selling your book, no matter how great it is, is tough. And it's hard to get people to see what you've done and to see it the way that you see it. And it's probably good to have someone on the outside see what you've done. I don't really go by beta readers, but then I've been at it a long time and I pretty well know if I've done something that's junk or not. Um, and I've had publishers and professionals agree with me. Um, so getting it published and then of course promotion and sales, but really, this is something that um, the self-publishing phenomenon has uh, saddled you know, more professional writers with. Now you have to do your own promotions. Now you have to do your own um, marketing. Now you have to do this and that. And you have to take less of an advance because other people are paying to do what you're doing. It's really quite unfair, but that's where the market has gone. And uh, people are desperate to publish who probably shouldn't, and they pay to do it. And that's called vanity. Um, what do I like? Oh, key learnings. I don't know if there are any key learnings. I have to digest a number of facts and cogitate, meditate, ruminate on many different things if I'm writing a book, especially if I'm writing three novels at a time. It's a panoply of consideration in the memory palace in my mind. And uh, I reflect on that and I learn from it and I digest and I ingest and digest more material and I'm continually doing it. So I'm always learning how ignorant I really am every time I get better and more refined data on the subject. Um, what I like to do when I'm not writing, I like to play music. Um, I play a, a few different instruments, but I focus on the uh, classic uh, acoustic steel string guitar. I like finger picking it. I like flat picking it. I like to play it. it makes me happy. I listen to a lot of music. I collect music, be it vinyl or CDs. I actually pr prefer a uh, well done mastering of analog music onto digital where you can actually hear all of the subtleties that you'll never get from vinyl, which is an inferior character. But sometimes the only master that exists is the vinyl. And you can e even digitally clean that up to some degree and many great masters have. So that's my obsession and my hobby. I like to go to restaurants, fine dining. I don't do walks on the beach. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't like pina coladas, uh, but I do appreciate a good 25 year old single malt whiskey. And I, uh, I like to go to movies and I like streaming TV and I'm addicted to TV just like a lot of you. Uh, although I'd probably be addicted to different things than you are, but maybe we have the same taste. You never know. What suggestions do I have for aspiring writers? Well, find another line of work. They're going to pay you more money and they're going to treat you much more nicely. Um, writing is a brutal thing to do if you want to try and make money at it in modern publishing, which takes no prisoners and, uh, really has no regard for the writer. And as years pass, the writer is treated with more and more contempt. I am amazed that a phenomenon like Yukioto Publishing is, exists because that's not who they are and I appreciate it no end. And let's see what lies in wait for the future. Well, by 2022, I'm gonna have five novels, including this one in print. And I'm hoping they sell. And by 2022, I hope I have more in the pipeline. I certainly have plenty. I have plenty to sell, no shortage of them. And I'm working on a graphic novel adaptation of one of my novels that I sold uh, with an artist. And uh, I hope that sells as well. And we can start pumping that out as issues um, in, in the form of comic books. 
Yes, I started as a child loving comic books and now as an adult, here I am recapitulating my knowledge and love of comic books that I gave up when I was what, 16? And uh, you know, here I am back in the thick of it, but I have no, no quarrel with it. I've always loved certain kinds of, and types of comic books, particularly the work of Will Eisner and legends like Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko. And so what else can I say on that? Um, that's what lies in the future. And what I'd like uh, readers to know is that uh, there's a lot of abuse of the reviews system on Amazon. I've been uh, unfairly attacked in reviews with one star reviews by people who never bothered to read a thing I've written. It's just they don't like the idea that I've dared to write about BDSM in a realistic fashion. And they don't like opinions that I have espoused on Twitter under my own name. I'm not hiding anything. So I've been beleaguered by fictitious, uh, vicious reviews. I encourage you to read the editorial reviews and maybe take a chance on the book itself and see where it stacks up. I've been a professional book reviewer. I did it for about 10 years. And you're looking at someone who has never reviewed a book without having read it first, often to my detriment. And again, my overall experience with Yu Kyoto, terrific. If I can sell them another book, I'm certainly going to do it. I would do it in a New York minute. But even so, as they've treated me and uh, the ogre life, I'm hoping that their plans for promotion and my own efforts will deliver a copy of the book into your hands. So I thank you very much for um, having the patience to sit through my, uh, my, my Q and A's courtesy of you, Kyoto, and for my being a non-professional talking head on YouTube. So, thank you.